guys? Welcome back to the Forgotten Jesus Podcast. My name is Andrew Bolton with Robbie and Candy Gowdy. So, Pastor, at the recording of this podcast, it is officially one year since we la- launched the podcast. Can you wow. believe it? Wow. Unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Crazy. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I have learned so much in the past year, so thank we made you for it. that. Nobody mm-hmm. thought we'd make it this far. I knew we would make it you this far. What are you talking about? Yeah. I didn't think we'd make it. Nah, I knew. I thought we'd make it. <laughs> yeah. No, and we're just getting started. And we are just getting started. And speaking of getting started, today we're getting started talking about the birth and dedication of Jesus. Yes, yes. So uh, for those who are journeying with us, we kind of did the birth narrative out of order for Christmas. And so you just have to make sure you go with the scripture references. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to be in Luke chapter two, verse 25. And we're almost through season two, which is going to believe it. Yeah, we're going to put a a comma on season two as we go into season three or or colon or or Robert's holding up his hand. Are we in season three right now? No, we're season three. Oh, I don't know. I, don't I, know. I, I I've gotten lost. season three you already. Did, not yeah, you you correct me. No, season three, we're going to go in season four. That's sorry. Right. So um, let's read Luke chapter two, verse 25. We're going to read about Simeon and Anna. And I'm telling you today, <laughs> there are some nuggets here that I'm learning still just piecing things together. It's just unbelievable. Okay, let's read Luke chapter two, Candy, verse 25. Obviously, I'll stop you along the way. Mm-hmm. No, not you. Not me. Okay. And no, not you. We'll have. I got a, I got a question. Yes. The boys think that. By the way, the boys think that is the funniest thing. We have an over and over under to see how long we can get into the podcast before. And I'll say, "What do you think?" Can you say, "I, I got a question," and then and then it's rabbit trail hunting from there. Okay, go, okay. Sandy. Sorry. Okay. All right. Verse twenty-five. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to Israel's consolation. Okay, now that's key. We'll come back to that. Just underline that in your Bible study notes. Looking forward to Israel's consolation. Keep going. Okay. And the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he saw the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, he entered the temple. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him up in his arms, praised God, and said... Okay, now stop there. I want you to notice up to this point, how many times we saw the word Holy Spirit, guided by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit was on him, the Holy Spirit spoke to him. Mm. This is this is abnormal mm. language. Right. Because remember, there have been in 400 years of silence, 491 years without uh, the, the presence, uh, or without the, the, the place of God, the Ark of the Covenant, 498 years roughly without the 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 uh the presence of god and so god's gone and yet here we go here we go right out the gate the holy spirit is working he's speaking right. he's acting he's appearing and so we see this this kind of contrast from the past so would this have been like a foreign feeling to him like i know when the holy spirit's working in my life i know when the holy spirit's prompting me mm-hmm. yeah so would he recognize this as oh this is something different yeah that, that's an interesting question so uh, and i'll just give a, a, a little insight here so we know there's there's one major difference uh, or there's a couple but one major difference between the holy spirit post uh, resurrection right. and pre-resurrection mm-hmm. right P- uh, old testament new testament you can think about it in the old testament god's spirit he would send upon his people or his person or his representative for a purpose right here's the key word intermittently Mm -hmm. intermittently or intermittently he would send his holy spirit upon david he would send his holy spirit upon gideon send his holy spirit upon elijah and then he would take it away which is why david would say repeatedly and he said this in a psalm do not not take your holy spirit from me right now a new testament christian we don't say that right because after acts chapter 2 when the holy spirit descended the major difference when we confess our sins, Jesus is our once and for all Savior, uh, Redeemer. One of the things God does is not only secures our spot in heaven for eternity, but he fills us, consumes us with his Holy Spirit. So right. it's not intermittently he resides within right. us. Now, mm-hmm. to answer your question is, well, I have a Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in me, but I don't always sense him or feel him or, or know he's there. There's a lot of reasons for that, but one of the things is just because God's present doesn't mean his presence is palpable. Mm-hmm. And one of the ways we live in a way that is contrary to that or pushes away or repels right. the Holy Spirit is how? The, pre- the the power and the presence and the, the manifest presence. We'll sin. We'll sin. sin. We'll yeah, sin. Yeah. We yeah. quench the Holy we Spirit. We quench. We grieve right. the Spirit. We read all this in the Bible. So, But yeah, to answer your question, I think this is a guess, but I think... This would have been abnormal for him, but it was so profound that the text says he knew Mm -hmm. he was not going to what? Die. Right. 
Like he knew I'm good. I mean, that's a profound statement. So you got to, you, you, I mean, you're either crazy or you're convinced, right? Yeah, hey man, I'm, I know I'm old, but I'm not going to die guys until I see the Holy spirit. Right. And so he, he was certain of that. So it was abnormal. I would say in that sense. Okay. I have a question. <laughs> Bingo. There we go. Question. Bingo card. Is not going to be that? a major yeah, question? Well, we don't have a t- timer. Is that working? Okay, okay, you've got time. Okay. okay, that's all right. So it says, when the parents brought in the child Jesus. Ooh. So how old is Jesus? Do we know? Yeah. Uh, this is not, this is not uh, newborn. What I was reading today is, is, is about 40 days old. So he's about 40 days old at this time. I was thinking about that when you were reading. Yeah, so he's not brand newborn he's not a, a little baby i mean he's not a, a newborn I mean, he's a month old if he, he's, 40, he's days. 40 days old yeah he's bringing him over as was the custom though. to the lord and going through the the practices yeah, yeah. that's what uh i was trying to find where i was reading that at but he he's he's not newborn but he's a month or two old so right. he's in there mm-hmm. so he takes this little child up and he sees and what's interesting is you'll notice what he says mm-hmm. about jesus but go ahead uh, read what he says, uh, verse 29. Watch this. Now, Master, you can dismiss your servant in peace as you promised, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Now, stop here. For my eyes have seen your salvation. In English, we just read that as your salvation. But in Hebrew, what he, he, what he would have said was, my eyes have seen Yeshua. Mm. Mm. Wow. Because you remember, Jesus' name is 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 salvation salvation. that's pretty cool play on words in Hebrew but go ahead keep going you have prepared it in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory to your people Israel Mm. his father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him then Simeon blessed them and told his mother Mary okay let's stop there we don't don't need a rest I mean we could but we we, we got enough I promise you Okay. okay in the four verses when Simeon speaks publicly 29 30, 31, 32. He's going to quote, guess how many, guess how many Old Testament references? Take a guess. Well, let me think here. Let me give well, you the we'll answer for four. time. Oh. Four. Okay, four is good. Four and four. That's yeah, a good that's guess. What I was thinking. Nine. Well, <laughs> Nine. Add them together, we're still wrong. Yeah, Genesis uh, forty six thirty, Psalm one nineteen. He's going to quote from Genesis forty nine and verse thirty. He's going to quote from Isaiah fifty two, Psalm ninety eight. He's going to quote from Isaiah forty nine. He wow. just quotes scripture. So this is a man who knows the word, waiting for mm. the, the Lord. Now the key principle I want to teach on now, which is not said in the text, but it's implied in the text, and there's a clue right out the gate that I told you, underline this, circle this. Right, right, right. Remember this? Yeah. The word consolation. So let's just camp out there for a moment. Notice what it says. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to Israel's consolation. Okay, let's just unpack that. What do you mm. think that means? If you're listening, well, you can think about it. when I think of consolation, I think of a consolation prize. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You didn't make it, but yeah. here's here's uh, an upward here's this award. Instead. Yeah, here's yeah. an award just for trying out. No consolation in this instance means the bringing together or the uniting of Israel through God's Messiah. This is what they believe. So the consolation of Israel is God promised in the Old Testament that He would bring peace to Israel and that He would take away their trouble. He would protect them. He would console them. Consolation, He would console them and He would give shalom mm-hmm. to the land through the Messiah. Now, why is that an odd line to say? Because everyone wasn't looking forward to that. Mm. Many people had forgotten God. They're like, we hadn't seen God in years. Well, generations, have generations lived in silence. Silence silence. Many had forgotten about him. Many had thrown in the towel. Many had said, God's not even, I mean, look at the corruption of the priesthood. Look at the mm. corruption of the, look at the Romans, look at the, the Greek influence. Okay. I mentioned that Israel's consolation is a key and it's a connection to an old Testament passage that is literally pregnant with messianic insight. Do you want to take a guess? I'll narrow it down. It's one of the prophets of the old Testament. Do you know who it is? I don't. What did you put? What'd you ask? <laughs> I'm still Wait, in the. I'm she's looking. on Instagram right now. What is what's going on right now? <laughs> no, I'm just. She so, needs to be on Chat GPT no, with you. No, I'm just so intrigued. <laughs> I don't have it open to do it. Whatever, whatever, you're good. I'm so intrigued that he. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that okay. he would not seek death. Yeah, before that, this yeah. Don't anyway, get sorry. That's sorry. good. But I, I, tr- I almost got off so on that in my study. No, no. Yeah, okay, so let me just speed it up for us for time. Oh. This is a reference. The consolation idea. Where is consolation oh, promised? God consoling, comforting his people. Where is the verse that they would think of for consolation? It's from the prophet Isaiah. Ooh. You ready for this? I was going to say Jeremiah. 
40, verse 1. Okay, turn with me in Isaiah 40, verse 1, if you have an Old Testament. If not, Candy will get there. It's a reference to Isaiah 40, verse 1. Now, let me just tell you, Isaiah 40 is a verse that most Christians need to know pretty fluently. We need to have a handle on this verse because there's so much here that you're, you're going to see. And I want to show you how it starts. So read verses 1 and 2, and I want to okay. show you the consolation promise. It says, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. There you go. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and announce to her that her time of hard service is over. Her iniquity has been pardoned, and she has mm. received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Okay, so that's wow. the promise. Now, let, let's put it contextually. Whenever we study a passage, we have to understand where the people were and what did the passage mean to those hearing it. What did they get from there? Like, we naturally will say, well, that's what Simeon was talking about in the New Testament. But let's go back to Isaiah. Where are the people he's speaking to when this passage is spoken or these words are spoken by God? In Isaiah exile? or which one? In Isaiah. Yeah. They're in exile where? Babylon. Babylon. They're in Babylon. They've been taken out of the land of Israel, living in captivity. Why? Because they have worshipped foreign gods and they have put their strength in them and they have worshipped foreign kings. They're in a foreign country and they have refused to trust in the Lord. They've done it in their own strength, not God's strength. But God is promising to these people, you stiff-necked people who have turned your back on me, I am not abandoning you. I'm not going to abandon you. Abandon you. I'm going to comfort you. And by the way, the very next thing he says is, I'm going to promise to you something. Mm-hmm. That if you do this, I will send my glory and all the people will see it. Verse 3. Watch this. The very next thing we like navigate into. Okay. You're going you're gonna to know this one well. A voice of one crying mm. out, prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness. Here we go. Make a straight highway for our God in the desert. Keep going. Yep. Every valley will be lifted up and every mountain and hill will be leveled. The uneven ground will become smooth and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will appear and all humanity together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Okay. So what he's saying is you have turned. But listen, but listen. I'm not abandoning you, abandoning you. In fact, I'm going to send my glory through a forerunner, a messenger who prepares the way Mm -hmm. for my coming, which Mm -hmm. is interesting. Now, we know this from past episodes, but who there are two people that took this verse literally and actually prepared the way of the Lord practically in what they did and how they lived. Okay. The first one we know pretty well. John the Baptist. John the Baptist. That's right. the It'll easy be. one. And mm-hmm. and season four, by the way, not three, but four, you're going to love this. We're going to get into John the Baptist and his Halloween, in a sense, dress up costume, right. standing in the wilderness, eating a certain diet to point to the old. It's going to be amazing. Tell me which episode that'll be, and I will dress that way, and I will eat <laughs> Here we go. locusts and honey. honey. Yes. Oh, no. Live yes. on the podcast. No, don't I've, they have locusts? We have to get I'll Andrew. Order. No, I think p- people want to see this. We have to get you one of the those candied locust candy you know what i'm talking about you can get them like, if you order it pastor yucky, yucky. i will try it robert put that on the notes i said if you order it right put that on notes for me to order, <laughs> for me to i even might eat it with you okay let's go if it was good enough for john it's That's good right. enough for us right okay the first one was john the baptist i'll eat the honey part because you're because you're sweet like candy okay but anyway so do we have we have john the baptist <laughs> And then we have another sect or group of people who took this verse seriously and believed that if they moved to the desert and lived in uh, a place of isolation, sweltering heat, sand in their face, no water accessible at times, that God would show up. Who are those people? Andrew? Who are you thinking, Candy? The (laughs) Essenes. I mean, that's. I mean, that is is what I was. Rick Rick says his favorite thing that Andrew does is says, "What do you think, Candy? What do you think?" Right? He he said that just makes the whole podcast. Okay, no, you're right. It's the Essenes. So the Essenes by the Dead Sea, and and I'll show you an interesting connection. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go down the rabbit trail of was John the Baptist an Essene? Mm. It's a whole nother discussion. Season four, by the way. Okay. So John the Baptist takes this verse and says, this is me. Okay. I'm the forerunner. So if you go through this verse, which is really the promise of the consolation of God, Simeon knew this chapter, John the Baptist knew this chapter, the Essenes knew this chapter. Let's go to the greatest promise of the chapter that most Christians know. Most Christians know this verse. You may not know the last one. Go to verse 28 
and I want you to read through verse 31. And this one is going to really bring this to life for us. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting, is the everlasting God, the creator of the whole earth. He never becomes faint or weary. There is no limit to his understanding. Okay, so he's setting up here to say, okay, this is who God is. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't wear out. He's limitless. So, so he sets who God is, and then he sets this to, to say this. Watch this. He gives strength to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Youths may become faint and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. Here it is. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not faint. Okay, here it is. Is that not a familiar verse? Mm -hmm. Now, we know it as those who what? Not trust in the Lord. The CSB is trying to transliterate and explain what the word means because it's more than just wait and they're giving us a clue i love that about the csb but the word wait i'm going to use as an example the the, the one we normally know is those, those who, who wait, wait upon the lord, the lord yeah. will renew their strength now mm -hmm. the hebrew word there wait is kava q-a-v-a-h kava it's the word wait now before i give you the definition what do you normally when you've read this all your life andrew candy Vivian's here. With what, what do you normally think of when you hear the word wait? What do you wait upon the Lord? He'll renew your strength. What do you think of Andrew? Uh, the need to be patient. Okay. That's a good one. Candy. Yeah. I mean the same. It's just this process of something that's not going to happen maybe right away, but yeah. Normally you think of God's sit timing. still, uh, sit down, stand, don't walk. You know, hold back. Okay. Okay. That's normally with how that. we use the Stay word. Stay at wait. the bus station. Yeah. Sit at the terminal. Hey, wait right here for a second. Yes. Okay. That is not what the Hebrew word means. Okay. The Hebrew word, you love this. The Hebrew word wait actually means to be intertwined together. It actually means to be bound together. Here's the word picture it's the word picture of a strand or a string of a rope where you twist the rope together with other pieces of rope to make a bigger rope. Mm -hmm. the, the, the strings in and of themselves can be cut or broken or pulled apart. Mm -hmm. But when the rope is put, the strings or the strands are put together and intertwined or binded together with the rope to make a thicker rope, it is unbreakable. Now, what does that have to do with the Lord? Let me give you a, let me give you a real world example. And Andrew, you will remember this from your youth pastor days. Ooh, okay. Do you remember the game we used to play, the three legged race? Oh yeah. Remember that game? Did yeah. you ever play the well, game? I, I don't, not from my youth pastor days, but from like my VBS as an actual kid days. Mm. Is that where you would put the bag on two people's legs and then that's you a, ran? That's a sack race. No, it's a sack race. But that's good too. But that's close. That's, that's close. That's What's close. a three-legged race? If if Robbie and I stood side by side, yes. we bound our inside leg together yep. okay, yeah, and that's what I'm we ran. Okay, yeah. then that's what I'm thinking. Okay, now think about that visual if you're, if you're joining us. Think of the visual. Picture so up. you and I, two big guys... <laughs> It's not going to be good. We bind our inner leg either with tape or a cord, and then the race starts, okay? <laughs> the only way we're going to be able to run yeah. any kind of distance, much less win the race, That's right. is to do one thing. we got to be in sync. Key. That's the key. Not, not the band. No, no. Bob, 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 it's like right Bob, there. Bob. <laughs> that's what I was thinking about singing as we were passing Bob, people Bob, Bob, yeah. running because we're nope. so in sync. That's, that's the thing. That's the thing we need to do. We need to be in sync. We need to be walking or running in rhythm. Right. Watch this. Together to complete the race. If I go too fast and you go slow, we fall. If you go mm -hmm. too fast, if you stop. Okay, that is what the Hebrew word wait means. It means to be in sync or in rhythm. What does this have to do with the passage? When a believer, watch this. When a believer waits upon the Lord, when a believer says, I'm gonna trust in God, as the CSB says, they get in rhythm mm. or in sync with God. What does that mean? You bind yourself to God so closely that when God walks, you walk. Right. When God stops or pauses, you stop. When God speeds up, you speed up and run with him. It's only when you wait upon the Lord, that's the wow. promise, or tie yourself to him mm -hmm. to get in sync with him 
do you start to renew your strength? Because the passage makes no sense without that. Like those who wait upon the Lord will walk and yeah. wait a minute. Am I supposed to be walking or well, am I you, supposed to be waiting? You continue to be an active participant in what God's doing. Yes. You renew your strength. You soar like right. eagles. You walk and not get tired when you're in sync with God. So we yeah. have to change our definition of what it means to wait. It doesn't mean to sit down and do nothing. Right. Far from it, right? It means to be actively connected with God's plan and purpose and promises and word for our life so that when we walk, he's walking with mm -hmm. us. And the more, watch this, the more we do that, the stronger we become as Christians. Wow. That's how you run and not, not grow really, weary. Yeah. That's how you live the Christian life and not throw in the towel. Well, you're running in pace with God instead of in pace with yourself or, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. like if I'm walking with my boys, they're, they're going to be able to walk a lot f further if they walk in the same pace I do. Cause I'm going to slow down when they need to, and I'm going to speed up when we need to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Think about how many times it's you and I, have tried to do that and walk either ahead of God, out right. of sync with God, and we wear out. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't or you take say a wrong it's turn. like... Oh, take a wrong turn because you're not tethered to God. Right. Yeah, it's good. It's a an act of dependence upon God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And like, because the only way this can happen and not to be um, pressed down and oppressed and all those things is to depend on God in every situation in our life. Don't you think? Yeah, it's like of this constant releasing of burdens and depending on him, which is why I love the the word the trust. Because mm -hmm, wait yeah. to me mean to me in in my mind means something totally different yeah. than trust. Yeah, totally. In the process of trusting, you do have to wait, right? Because yeah. things are never on our time. Yeah. But I don't know, just I love the word to trust. Yeah. Because and and that that takes a lot of um surrendering in our lives. Yeah. So here's pop quiz as we close. Jesus, I believe, had this concept in mind when he told the disciples in the crowd something about how to combat weariness. Remember, you start to understand these Old Testament passages bring light to the nail. Jesus has a crowd around him. These people are worn out. They're weary. They're heavy laden and they're burdened. Oh, come to me. And <laughs> Jesus says, let's think about it. Totally different meaning now. When Jesus says, come to me, what? All. All who are weary and heavy laden or burdened or overwhelmed, if you're listening. And I will give, give you rest, rest mm -hmm. for your souls. And here's what he says. Mm -hmm. For my yoke yeah. is easy mm -hmm. and my burden, burden is light. light. You know what a yoke was? It was basically a, a, a contraption, a wooden contraption that right. had two holes in it that they would put two oxen in. Oh, gosh. One would be I on the right this. side. Yeah. Do you remember the first? Jim this? Shaddix. Yeah, yep. Jim Shaddix taught us so this. Good. He would come out with this yoke out on the stage and he put his head in and he would say, if you're in it by yourself, you're going to wear out. Oh, yeah. But the cool thing is when Jesus is in the yoke, mm -hmm. you sometimes walk on your own. And that's fine. But many times you can't walk by yourself and he walks with you. But many times you can't walk at all. And Jesus walks for you. Well, the power of the yoke Scary. is when that's you what walk means at to the wait. same, you walk at the same speed. You walk together. You never wear out. Yeah. You never wear out. Yeah. So I don't know where you are today, but I'm just thinking in our, in our study groups and our, our, yeah. our, our groups that are gathering, think about times that you've gotten worn out and think about times you've gotten ahead of the Lord or maybe got out of sync with God or yeah. when, or, or like you said, took a detour away from God and think of what happened when you mm -hmm. did. And then also think of times when you were in step with God. Right. That's why Paul says, uh, keep in step with the spirit of God. Right. Walk after the spirit of God. Galatians chapter five, when he talks about that list, keep, he said, I try to keep in step with the spirit of God. What he's saying is we're tethered. We're waiting. We're walking. We're intertwined. We're bound mm -hmm. together in sync. Yeah. So you may be listening right now and asking, okay, that sounds great. How do I do that? Uh, pastor, something you say all the time is we want to get into the word until the word gets into us. Mm -hmm. So I know practically the more I'm in God's word, the easier life is. Not that the hard stuff doesn't happen. I mean, yeah. trials continue to happen even more so sometimes. Yeah. But when I'm in the word, yoked to Jesus in that way, it just, everything hits different. And it, it helps me, you know, have more hope in the hard days and the good days are even better. So, yeah, mm. but because you know what's expected of right. you and you know what God's plan is for your right. life. And well, so, you and there's intimacy with the Lord. True. Like when you're in the word yeah. and you have intimacy with the Lord, it yeah. changes totally your perspective on everything. Totally. Yeah. And, yeah. and 
really and truly, I would say in the study groups too, if you're going to be talking about this, you need to confess the burdens that you're carrying alone Mm. and realize that you do not have to do that. That is so freeing to, to, to know that you're not alone in this life that the Lord has given you. And when you can sit before him and just give it to him, Mm. you know, like there is a release and a freedom in that, that you're not alone in this and that he will carry it for you. He says he will give it to him. Yeah. Yeah, You've got to, you've got to confess what is the burden that you are carrying or you're trying to carry all on your own Mm. and enter into that space with God and let him carry that for you, yep. you know? Release and it, um, yep. Yes, yes. Man, that's good. For your health. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode, Pastor Candy. Thank you. I'm excited as we wind down season three mm. to get into season four and see what all happens. We have some nuggets yeah. the next week or two. I'm yeah, just telling it's you, be good. unbelievable. It's going to be good. Well, yep. we're not quite done yet with no, this season. No. So uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Of course, connect with us on social media. We love yep. hearing your questions and how the podcast is impacting your life at The Forgotten Jesus on Instagram. Uh, and of course, share this with a friend. Leave us a review. All that stuff helps us to continue to reach more people and help people dive deep into their journey with Jesus and Scripture in this way. So uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next episode.